three vignettes, three lessons. Three vignettes, three lessons. Vignette one, phi in the sky. So the unfathomable tragedy came to pass that three unlucky individuals stumbled upon the pearly gates to the entrance of heaven at the same time. The first was a haggard man stooped over an old cane made of wood. He appeared far older than his 45 years on earth. His clothes were worn, and he had several holes in his mud-caked jeans. His shoes had lost all form and looked more like random swaths of cloth slapped together with a few measly threads of twine. He was thin with a protuberant abdomen. Although bedraggled and malnourished, he strode up to St. Peter with a mix of humility and pride. He hadn't survived all those decades on the streets for nothing. St. Peter looked down lovingly and opened his arms as if to embrace this poor soul. His words were like honey, soft and kind. Welcome, Timothy, son of God. What was your purpose down there on earth? And Timothy replied, Pardon me, sir, for my purpose was meek, for I was a homeless man, devoid of riches or shelter. I lived on the street faithfully, begging for all that would sustain me. Although I never built nor created I was kind and gentle. I supported my fellow man in need and was never driven to steal nor trespass. I might not have amounted to much, but I lived purely. St. Peter replied, Welcome to the kingdom of heaven. As you say, your heart was kind and your spirit true. Here you will find that you never lack for food or sustenance. You will be adorned in the finest cloth. You'll have no use for money because all your needs will be provided for. As the last words left the great saint's mouth, the pearly gates swung open and Timothy joyously leapt through. Next, it was Stephen's time at the front of the line. He wore a well-tailored suit that hugged his muscular physique perfectly. A briefcase swung in his well-manicured right hand. His face was tan, and not a hair was out of place on his head. St. Peter looked down lovingly and opened his arms as if to embrace this confident soul. His words were like honey, soft and kind. Welcome, Stephen, son of God. What was your purpose down there on earth? Stephen replied, I was a titan of Wall Street. I made more money than I ever could have imagined. Although I didn't have much time to enjoy it, I provided amply for my wife and my daughter. I lived a life of great stress, but never did it drive me to become a liar or a cheat. Many a man was made rich by my hard work. Many charities were fully funded by my firm. St. Peter replied, Welcome to the kingdom of heaven. As you say, your heart was kind and your spirit true. Here you will find that you never have to be a slave to money ever again. You will enjoy all the riches you had on earth, but you will only be allowed to work at that which brings you joy. In fact, you never have to work again if you don't want to. You will have infinite possibilities in how to spend your day. As the last words left the great saint's mouth, the pearly gates swung open, 
and Stephen joyously leapt through. Finally, it was Sarah's time in front of the podium. She wore a t-shirt and jeans and walked to the front as if she was in no particular hurry. She showed none of the signs of physical deprivation of Timothy, nor the stressed countenance of Stephen. St. Peter looked down lovingly and opened his arms as if to embrace this nonchalant soul. His words were like honey, soft and kind. Welcome, Sarah, daughter of God. What was your purpose down there on earth? Sarah replied, I was a daughter and a sister and a wife. I wrote a blog and I helped create a community. I also like to teach yoga on the weekends for fun. I left my corporate job at the age of 35 after I discovered such luminaries as J.L. Collins, Jack Bogle, and Mr. Money Mustache. My path to early financial independence allowed me to travel the world. I experienced many cultures. I slept late on Mondays and drank coffee at midnight on Tuesdays. I've lived a full life. Now, St. Peter was a little perplexed by Sarah. He couldn't decide if she was poor and homeless, like Timothy, or was she stressed and overworked, like Stephen. He figured probably a little bit of both. St. Peter replied, Welcome, Sarah, daughter of God. Here you will find that you never lack for food or sustenance. You will be adorned in the finest cloth. You'll have no use for money because all your needs will be provided for. You will only be allowed to work at that which brings you joy. In fact, you never have to work again if you don't want to. You will have infinite possibilities in how you spend your time. Now, Sarah couldn't help but giggle. And she looked up shyly at St. Peter and said, What? Are you sending me back to earth? <laughs> Vignette one, phi in the sky. Lesson one, bring a little piece of heaven to earth with financial independence. Vignette two, oh, the money you'll save. Congratulations. Today is your day. Your money is invested in great places. You're off and away. You've got brains in your head and feet in your shoes. You can invest your money in any way you choose. You're on your own, and you know what you know, and you're going to be the guy who decides where your money goes. You look up and down term sheets. Look them over with care. About some, you'll say, I don't choose to put my money there. With your head full of brains and your shoes full of feet, you're too smart to take a random walk down Wall Street. And you might not find any mortgages you wish to pay down. In that case, of course, you'll head straight out of town. It's opener there in the wide open air. Out there, things tend to happen and frequently do to people as cash heavy and as frugal as you. And when they start to happen, don't worry, don't stew, just keep on investing and your net worth will start to rise too. Oh, the money you'll save. Your balances will be on the way up. You'll be seeing great sights. You'll join the high earners who soar to high heights. Your net worth won't lag behind because you have all you need. You'll surpass the whole gang and you'll soon take the lead. Wherever you invest, you'll be the best of the best. Wherever you go, your dividends will top the rest. Except when they don't, because sometimes they won't. I'm sorry to say so, but sadly it's true. The bear markets and capital losses can happen to you. <laughs> you'll get caught up in a prickly perch. Your assets will go lower, and you'll be left in a lurch. 
You'll come down from that lurch with an unpleasant bump, and the next thing you know, you'll be in a stock market slump. And when you're in a slump, you're not in for much fun. Holding on to those investments and not selling is not easily done. You'll come to a place where the roads are not marked, some windows are lighted, but mostly they're dark. A place where the market could give you one on the chin. Do you dare stay out? Do you dare go back in? How much could you lose? How much could you win? And if you go back in, do you dollar cost average or jump? Or jump just three quarters or some other lump? <coughs> or wait around for the Dow to bump? Easy it's not, I'm afraid you will find for a mind maker upper to make up his mind. You'll get so confused that you'll start into race down long wiggled roads at a breaknecking pace and grind on for miles across weirdish wild space, headed, I fear, towards a most useless place, the waiting place. For people, just waiting. Waiting for a tenant to go, or waiting for a windfall to come, or waiting for a stock to grow, or waiting for the mail to come, or waiting for a side hustle to go, or waiting for the phone to ring, or waiting for a pattern to show, or waiting around for a yes or a no, or waiting for market capitalization to grow. Everyone is just waiting. Waiting for a client to bite, or waiting for the wind to fly a kite, or waiting around for a Friday night, or waiting perhaps for your rich Uncle Jake, or a pot of gold, or a better break, or a string of pearls, or Paula Pant, or some investment advice, or another chance. Everyone is just waiting. No, that's not for you. Somehow you'll escape all that waiting and staying. You'll find the bright places where the Choose FI podcast is playing. <laughs> and with banner flip flapping, once more your net worth will ride high, ready for any downturn under the sky, ready because you're that kind of guy. Oh, the money you'll save. There are things to be done, there are points to be scored, there are free flights to be won. You'll try not to bumble, your taxes will be done. You can't even help it, you might get a small refund. Except when you don't, because sometimes you won't. I'm afraid that sometimes there'll be lonely times too. Investments that can't win, because they'll be made by only you. All alone, whether you like it or not, alone with financial fears, you'll be quite a lot. And when you're alone, there's a very good chance those fears will scare you right out of your pants. There are many down the road between hither and yon that can scare you so much you won't want to go on. But on you will go, though the market be foul. On you will go, though the bears growl. On you will go, though your tenants howl. Onward up many a frightening peak, although your balances get sore and your accounts may leak. On and on you'll hike, and I know you'll hike far and stand up to your financial problems, whatever they are. You'll get mixed up, of course, as you already know. You'll get mixed up with many strange investments as you go. So make sure when you step, step with care and even tact. And remember that your finances are a great balancing act. Never forget to be a true money boss and never mix up your traditional with your Roth. <laughs> and will you succeed? Yes, yes, of course, indeed. 98 and three quarters percent guaranteed kid, you'll make mountains. So be your name Bogle or Collins or JD or you're some funny guy with a mustache named Pete. You're off to great places. Today is your day. Financial independence awaits you. So get on your way. Vignette two, oh, the money you'll save. Lesson two, in your path to financial independence, there will be ups and downs. Persist. And yet three, underdog become the champion. I am a product extracted from an era. 
my mother swears that she knows the exact moment when each one of her three boys was conceived. <laughs> For me, it was during my father's long convalescence with mononucleosis. He also was using protection. I should have never come to be. Cruise like a fruit, ship like foreign goods. Out of that maelstrom grew a tender, sensitive boy who was the youngest of three. I was babied and coddled and never knew of hardship nor discomfort. Now all a man overpopulate neighborhoods. It was just before my father's death that I was diagnosed with a learning disability. I couldn't do what the other kids could. I was the last in my class to learn how to tie my shoes. It was on the eve of my father's premature demise that we were poised to move to a new home in a new neighborhood so that I could repeat second grade without all the social stigma of staying in the same school system. These thoughts I retain cannot remain inside me. People had their way, they probably want to hide me. Instead, my father went to work one morning and never came home. We never bought the home. We never moved. Three months later, in front of my whole class, my teacher graduated me from coloring books to reading at grade level. She placed text after text in front of my face, and I did something that I had never done before. I read. Never should they think of me as just dust. I am not the lint for them to just thrush. For the next five years, I went to a tutor every week to catch up with my peers. Throughout middle school and high school, I failed at just about everything. I failed at just about everything. Because they know who I am. They dare not laugh. I practiced basketball all summer long to make my freshman year team. I then choked in the second, year, in the second round and was cut. Every girl I was interested in either turned me down or laughed in my face. So I buried myself in books. I started to exercise and lift weights. I began to write poetry. I figured I had failed at everything else so far. What else did I have to lose? My skills stem first from me, arts and crafts. I'm a builder who's created many nations. It was right around then that I discovered rap music. Not just the misogynistic, violent type, but also the call for social change. Karis One and Boogie Down Productions. One, two, three, the crew is called BDP. And if you want to go to the tip top, stop the violence and hip hop. Or maybe Chuck D and Public Enemy. I got a letter from the government the other day. I opened and read it. It said they were suckers. They wanted me for the army or whatever. Picture me giving a damn. I said never. Or who could have forgotten Slick Rick the ruler? Hey, young world, the world is yours, young world, young world, the world is yours, young world. Through all the cities and all the neighborhoods, my meaning's overlooked and I'm never understood. These words spoke to the weak suburban kid who could never seem to get it done, especially a song by a band, Third World, called Theme from the Underdog, Underdog Become the Champion. It became my anthem, the silent antidote to all the sadness, guilt, and shame for having so much and yet being so little. It helped me find my center of power. It became my theme music. My mind and body is feared when used together. Not only am I strong, but also clever. 
These have been the words that I have said to myself before amazing delight, heartbreaking fear, earth-shattering anxiety. But even after this, they still don't believe. Upon graduating high school, while taking the entrance exams to medical school, on my first day of residency, in that night in the ICU when I held another human being's life in my hands and I failed, upon giving my most sacred vows to my wife that I can advance and grow and achieve just as they can, or maybe even better, on October 25th, 2004, when I held my son in my arms during his first few moments of life, when I decided to give up clinical medicine and stop being a doctor. A few moments ago, before I started giving this talk, they tried to hold me back like a book holds letters. This kid, birth itself, an unlikely probability, guilty, ashamed, failure-prone, and learning disabled, wandering through high school halls with a litany of rap lyrics pulsating through his ever-expanding mind, this kid, this kid became one with my center of power by discovering a few throwaway song lyrics. But I won't be ignored and I'll fight to the fall so it does not hurt when they call me the underdog. Vignette three, underdog become the champion. Lesson three, find a way to touch your center of power and be fierce. So there you have it. Three vignettes, three lessons. Vignette one, phi in the sky. Lesson one, bring a little piece of heaven to earth with financial independence. Vignette two, oh, the money you'll save. Lesson two, in your path to financial independence, there will be ups and downs. Persist. And lesson three, underdog become the champion. Find a way to touch your center of power and be fierce. So I would be remiss if I finished this talk without regaling you with the full lyrics to my theme song. <laughs> so I'm going to perform it for you right now. <laughs> this is the theme from The Underdog, The Underdog Become the Champion by Third World. I am a product extracted from an era, an era of grief, poverty, and terror. Cruise like a fruit, ship like foreign goods. Now all a mine overpopulate neighborhoods. These thoughts I retain cannot remain inside me. People had their way, they probably want to hide me. Never should they think of me as just dust. I am not the lint for them to just thrush. Because they know who I am. They dare not laugh. My skills stem first from me, arts and crafts. I'm a builder who's created many nations to the time of now from the start of plantations through all the cities and all the neighborhoods. My meaning's overlooked and I'm never understood. My mind and body is feared when used together. Not only am I strong, but also clever. My anatomy is similar, yet it's unique with strength and coordination and stone heart physique. But be that as it may, I've been denied what I've earned. This course of knowledge, I cannot hide what I've learned. Any land, any structure, I'm the owner, the founder, the father, the labor donor. Any invention discovered, I own the rights. My people and I shared many sleepless nights. But even after this, they still don't believe that I can advance and grow and achieve just as they can, or maybe even better, they try to hold me back like a book holds lettuce. But I won't be ignored, and I'll fight to the fall so it does not hurt when they call me the underdog.